It's time to talk the world's game from an American perspective. Presented by ShopFutsal.com, you're listening to Two Up Front, where we focus on all things American soccer. Now in the studio, your hosts, Baxter Colburn and Simon Provan. And welcome to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFootsall.com. I am Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. A very good Friday morning to you, Simon Provan. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Baxter. How about yourself? I am doing well. I'm excited to get away for the beautiful Fourth of July weekend, going up to see some family way up north, as we say up here in Wisconsin, and uh, be nice to unplug for a little while. What about you? Well, I'm actually heading out to Oregon for a couple of weeks. Oh! No, I'm not going. Are you to going any, on the Oregon Trail? I, well, if I do, I hope I don't die of any <laughs> Malaria, weird diseases, lose a limb, or, or whatever those <laughs> random diseases are, or that nobody falls in the river and exactly. you know, drowns. You break a wheel on your wagon. Yep, and just, yep. It's terrible. I'll be I'll be out there for two weeks for some actor training and getting a certification in you what's called the training. Meisner technique. <laughs> You're a professional. Well. Uh, well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the day, yes. So anyways, which also means, though, Baxter, I'll be I'll be away from here for two weeks. Yeah. So I don't uh, know what I'm going to do. One up front again? or Maybe. I might. Uh, playing might, that classic number nine? I might see if Corey Plath wants to come off the bench. He's been, uh, he's been dormant for a while, but maybe I'll, I'll see if he wants to come off the bench. Or maybe Chris Blakely out in Seattle might, uh, might co-host with me and make it all Seattle or something for a couple of weeks while you're gone or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. And, uh, don't tarnish the, sh- the show I'll try much. not to completely kill our reputation, honestly. But uh, it's interesting, speaking about our reputation, before we get into our normal formalities in the beginning of the show, um, we, have a, we have a new brand about us, apparently, now, Simon, at least according to MLSsoccer.com. Um, yes. Uh, it's an exciting thing, but it's an interesting thing at the same time. Um, you can now find Two Up Front on MLSsoccer.com under their, uh, their MLS podcast guide, which is incredibly exciting. MLS podcast! And the reason Simon does that is here is the official description for Two Up Front. The soccer show that sounds most like the name of a 90s boy band comes courtesy of two Wisconsin soccer advocates who make interviews with MLS players and other league-affiliated personalities part of their show. Two Up Front, we love you! Woo-hoo-hoo. I mean, that sounds like more of like a Michael Jackson 80s thing in yes, the 1990s. Well, that's what I grew up with. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a child of the 90s, but I didn't listen to any of that stuff. I was I was all about that, that Christian like rock music back in the day, like Skillet and Switchfoot and some of those people. But I, the 90s boy band, I mean, Two Up Front, I guess, like 98 Degrees, Backstreet Boys, and Two Up Front. Like, you know, I could see that. Hey, you know what? If it sets us apart, And if why for some not? reason this show goes south, we always have a backup now. We, right. we could be a, we could be a 90s cover band. You know, we are two up front covering the best of the 90s boy bands. Yeah. I think yeah. that could go very far. I could swear that two up fronts also mentioned when talking about different soccer formations. But, hey, we'll go with the boy band sure, thing. Sure. Whatever, whatever helps people recognize who we are, Yeah, I that's guess. right. Uh, but either way, though, we're, we're very grateful. So thank you, MLSsoccer.com. And uh, hopefully you still recognize us as just two up front soccer show, um, where you can, hear, you can hear us on Fridays, of course, on the Sports Podcasting Network at 11.30 a.m. Central Time. And then On Demand on iTunes and iHeartRadio and on Spreaker.com as well. And then you can uh, also visit our website, TwoUpFrontSoccer.com. You can also find us on Facebook at TwoUpFront or on Twitter at TwoUpFrontSoccer. Of course, you can also find him at Baxter Colburn and me at Simon Provan. Yes, indeed. And you can always shoot us an email as well, TwoUpFrontSoccer at gmail.com. If you have any other thoughts, comments, concerns, prayer requests, or other random things that you'd like to talk about according to the soccer world. We love hearing from you. We've had some great interaction on our Facebook page about recent articles. Need to give a couple shout-outs to, let's see here, Scott Carlson, Anthony Larson, uh, Travis Lang has been commenting up a storm as well too recently, Dan Kartz. So all of you that are out there, John O'Donnell as well, thank you so much for your continued support and commenting as well. We love hearing from you, especially on social media. That means somebody's actually listening. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I do want to give a special thanks to uh, Anthony Larson and um, to Scott as well because those guys, man, you guys are retweeting stuff, you're, mm-hmm. you're sharing stuff on Facebook, the posts that we have, and we can't thank you enough for for the extra step you're taking to help us in our efforts to grow as a show. Yes, no, I completely agree with you on that one. All right, well, let's get right to it uh, as part of the kick around here in our first little part of the show. A couple different things. Um, 
Well, this is an MLS thing, but we'll get to it a little bit later on the show as well. Toronto FC, Simon, they won the Canadian Championships. They went uh, they went to Vancouver. And, they went to uh, Vancouver. They were, they were winning yes. 1-0 on aggregate, and then they were down 2-1 on aggregate. Vancouver shot out of the gate and scored two goals, and everyone's like, wow, Vancouver's going to finally be relevant. And then at the bitter, bitter, bitter end, Simon, Will Beyond Johnson. Beyond the end. Beyond was, the end. This was like the afterlife. It was The game was done. Everybody was off the field, except the ref hadn't blown the whistle yet. And Will Johnson popped up, Mr. Former Timbers captain, and scores the game-winning goal. I mean, even though, oh, they lost. No, they didn't. As you know, on aggregate, the uh, when there's a draw at the end of the, the two-leg series, the first tie goes to away goals, and TFC had the one away goal. So they It won. was critical, and we talked about on the show last week how critical it was that they had a shutout in that first game. Yeah. And this is why, because now they had... Well, I'm not going to say they had momentum in this game, but they had momentum in this series because they didn't allow that away goal. Exactly. And they, then they, they had that goal at home. And yeah, the, the clock, they were told four minutes, but... Uh, the clock went a little bit beyond four minutes. But but what people need to remember is that the time that is shown for stoppage time is minimum. Yes, a minimum of four minutes because the official has the you know the actual time on his watch, of course, which is why you know you'll see that sometimes where it'll be three minutes of stoppage time and you're in minute whatever ninety five or whatever, and people are like, well, well, what are we doing? Well, if there's a foul, if there's a stoppage on the field, I mean, it still keeps going. It just you know it doesn't yeah, always and stop. One, and one of the things is Vancouver was doing a lot of time wasting when it hit the ninetieth minute. Ah. So you know people are saying, well, the ref probably then added Tacked a little bit a more little time. Bit more. Yeah. Which ended up going into TFC's favor. So that is, to my knowledge, their first official cup of any existence in their or cup of, wow, any title in their existence. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll do a little bit have, of research on a I feel like they may have won here. this Canadian championship before. I don't know if that's officially I th- true. I feel like they did it maybe their second or third year of existence. I think so. Either way, though, I mean, yes, they've never won the Shield or the U.S. Open Cup or MLS Cup, but being the best team in Canada of the three teams is something. I guess. Well, it is. It gets you in the CONCACAF Champions League. Exactly. It doesn't matter so how you a, get there. It's a bigger a bigger picture at the same time. So I think that's very notable for TFC, and uh, congratulations to them for doing that. <laughs> hey, Baxter, you want to know something funny? Please. They've won it five times. Ah, <laughs> well, seems just like yesterday was their first one. Yes, they won it in uh, four years in a row, 09, 10, 11, 12. So this makes the first time in four years, though, that they've won the cup, which See, makes that's it, which why. is why that's why. Right. Okay, I didn't. I was mildly following MLS last time they won it. Vancouver has only won it once, and that was last mm. year. Well, good for them, though. I mean, at the same time, it's nice to see it's not just one team that continues to sweep everybody, but. Uh, it would be nice to see the Ottawa Fury maybe make a run at it in some at some point. The NASL team that uh, sure. is also part of this sure. this quad. And then, uh, well, there's the uh, FC Edmonton also takes part. That's in what it, I'm right? sorry. Right. FC Edmonton and Montreal Impact as well too. And yep. uh, Montreal didn't have a good showing this time this time around. But uh, congratulations to Toronto on winning the Canadian Championships, their first of what they hope to be many trophies this year. And uh, they have an opportunity to win one more trophy because they are no longer in the running for the U.S. Open Cup, unfortunately. Who's but, that? TFC. They can't be in the U.S. Open Cup. Why not? I'm a correcting machine here tonight. My goodness. Oh, because they're, they're a Canadian club. But they're a part of a, an American league, though. Yeah, but they, the, the three Canadian clubs do not participate. Is that why there's the Canadian the, championships? That's part. Well, it, it was part of it is based on the fact of the uh, U.S. Open Cup taking place. But then they realized we need to make a way, you know, find a way to have these Canadian teams qualify for the CONCACAF mm. Champions League and have it only be be uh, between the Canadian clubs rather than saying, well, we'll base it off of MLS standards. Gotcha. Because you have teams like Ed, uh, FC Edmonton and mm-hmm. Ottawa Fury uh, who are not MLS clubs. Sure. Okay, that makes a lot more sense then. This is what happens when I reference FIFA as my as my guide because FIFA does it totally different because FIFA doesn't do all these little teams. It's just like everybody plays in the U.S. Open Cup in FIFA. So, Well, that's when you got to talk to the old guy exactly. on the show, Baxter. My, my apologies for not trusting your, <laughs> your wisdom. So let's move away from that before I make myself a fool anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun. Come I on. Know, I know. Um, something. Speaking of having fun, Manchester United fans are excited for next season. They finally have a reason. They get a new head coach for number one. Jose, Jose Mourinho, as they like to call him, will be there. So that's exciting if you like that sort of thing. But even even bigger, bigger than Jose Mourinho himself, which you didn't think was possible, except when you go and sign a man whose ego is bigger than old, all, than, all old, of the than EPL. All, old Trafford, basically. Zlatan, he is signed, and he is going to Manchester United. Do you like this move? Now, I don't care for him as a person, as we of talked course, about, but I think this is a great move for them. They they need they need a big transfer like this. They and, do. and you know what? He is... 
He is a great player. He's never and played in the EPL, to my knowledge. He is not. Which and just blows my mind. Well, and it, but it's it's a great move for them because he still has a lot in the tank. Mm-hmm. I, I agree, and I think that was an which inter- which is interesting because if he were to come to MLS, people would be saying, "See, there there's another yeah. there's another player looking to retire." And I think maybe that was what he wanted. He was thinking about that too. He's like, "Look, I could go to the Premier League. I think that's like one of the only titles he hasn't won because he's won the French title, he's won the Spanish title, I believe. I mean." I don't think he's only played in Spain and England, to my, or Spain and France, I mean, to my knowledge. I don't think he's played in Germany at all. I could be wrong. I don't have his, his life in front of me, unfortunately, and I'm assuming that's what you're doing right now. I'm looking up that stuff, yes. So it, it, it's interesting, though, because I've heard comments about this now, meaning, asking what role does Wayne Rooney have on the team now? Mm. Is he done? Does he get transferred somewhere else? Does he retire after how England has crashed and burned out of the Euros now? Like, what, what does Wayne Rooney do now? I think he still has a little bit left in the tank. I mean, he's the captain after all. But is it time for Manchester United to move on? Well, it's the difficulty with that is is you can can you really say you're moving on when you bring in a you know a player like Zlatan who mm-hmm. yeah he's not tremendously old but he's certainly not young anymore. No, he hasn't been for some time. But I mean, you look at a guy he scored over fifty goals last year in all competitions. Oh, absolutely. That's why I say he's on a, a high he's level. A great player. It's not yes, like he was right. going out in China and scoring fifty goals. He scored fifty goals between the Champions League and Ligue 1 in France for PSG, a top flight club in the world. He's not just messing around. He's not just shooting on his ten year old son in the backyard. No, he's, absolutely. He's not. scoring against world class players. But I'm just saying, if you're looking long term. Replacing Rooney, this is not the player you no, replace him not. with long term. You think term. it would be maybe Marcus Rashford or something that's worked their way through the Manchester United youth system and now onto the English national team a little bit and is slowly starting to work his way up. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I-, I think the move is a smart one for Man United. They needed a vigor back in their fans after a very depressing last couple of years. And now you've got Jose Mourinho, now you've got Zlatan. There's rumors that James Rodriguez might be moving there. I've heard rumors of Paul Pogba coming back to town as well, too. Jose Mourinho is out for blood. He's like, look, oh, yeah. I'm sick yep. and tired of Manchester United being bad, and I want them to be good again, so he's going to probably bet the house and well, hope for the best. And after his uh, failure with Chelsea, he's yeah. certainly looking to bring his reputation back up. Exactly. Speaking of building a reputation, a man here stateside, Simon, that... It depends on who you ask, what Jurgen Klinsmann's reputation is, I feel like. Some it, it people is. swear by him. Some people say, I don't even know the man. And other people are kind of like me who are in the middle where it's like, let me flip a coin and I'll tell you how I'm feeling for the day because you never know what you're going to get with him. There's rumors, Simon, now that Roy Hodgson is gone for the England national team, the, some of the English papers and English fans are calling for Jurgen Klinsmann to be the new English coach. Jurgen Klinsmann still has a job last time I checked with USA. He hasn't been fired yet. I don't know if he will be fired. Well, he's also come out and said, not with this latest ordeal, uh, but he's also come out and said, I'm sticking with the U.S. I yes. signed with them through 2018, and, and he wants to see this project, as he likes to call but it, through. if England through. comes coming a, quote-unquote, much better team, a team that has the Jurgen Klinsmann mentality, possibly, with European players that know how to play the European game, how Jurgen Klinsmann knows how to play the game, would that be a possibility? We've also heard rumors of Southampton trying to get him to be their manager as well. Right. Uh, which, which would keep him in England even more. Yeah, very true. Um, the, yeah, the, the tough thing here is if Klinsman is really honest about wanting to see through his project, yes. which I think he needs to, as, point, as much as I'd love to see him go. I was going to say, at this point, would it be the worst if he left? Oh, no. No, not at all. Not at all. Mm-hmm. I, I As a fan, I'd be okay. Yeah. But... With what happened at Copa, but still, I think I think that's fooling a lot of people. It's not like they they beat Argentina or Brazil yeah. or even Chile. Well, even Chile, they won the whole thing. Yeah, but it's, it's not like they beat those teams to get mm-hmm. to the semifinals of the Copa. Exactly. Right? But no, he got to the I, I semifinals agree. of the Copa. I understand that. Um, he was a lot more consistent in this last tournament. So yeah, he was. Is you know, it, are we finally seeing Klinsman's plan come together? But after at the same five time, five or six years, though, right. I think it's time to move on. Well, I I agree. You know, I'd mm-hmm. never argue with that. Um, uh, listen, Jamie Gall- uh, uh, Carragher, former English defender, yep. has come out and said he thinks Klinsman is going to take the job. I think so. I just, well, for my money, Klinsman with the U.S., he's able to hide. He's yes. able to hide behind his shortcomings because he can always blame it on the, on the lack, lack of, of culture, lack yes. of talent. You can't do that in England. I agree. No, I completely agree. I mean, England, I mean, for goodness sakes, they pretty much invented the sport, for goodness sakes. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if it'll be a thing that actually happens. I think it would be a good idea at this point. We've seen what he's done in Copa. We've seen what we've done in Gold Cup. We've seen the World Cup. I think it's time for Jurgen Klinsmann to say, thanks, U.S. It's been fun. 
I want to go. Go. Fine. Do it. By the way, Baxter, shame on us. Oh. Ajax, Juventus, Inter Milan. Oh, that's right. He did play in Italy. He played in Syria. He played in the uh, Air Divisi. So, yeah, he's played all over. Zlatan, what a guy. What a guy. All right, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to do our first interview today with head coach of the Portland Thorns, Mark Parsons. You're not going to want to miss it. Interview! Woohoo! On to up front! Back after this. Stay with us. Welcome back inside the studio for another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. Oh, hello, Simon Provan. Doing another remote interview today, are we? Well, we do. You know, I'm busy with the kids, Baxter, running all around, so this is how we make it work. Absolutely, and uh, we are excited because it's time for our Women's Soccer Spotlight here on Two Up Front. And joining us this week, we have head coach of the Portland Thorns, Mark Parsons, joining us. Good afternoon, coach, and welcome to Two Up Front. Good afternoon, guys, and thanks for having me on. You're very welcome, Coach. We are excited to have you on the the league-leading Portland Thorns, Coach. Uh, You didn't start off leading the league. You were trying to figure out things. The Washington Spirit, your old club, were dominating for a while, and now all of a sudden you guys find yourself on top of the table. How does it feel to be uh, several points clear of those uh, pesky Chicago Red Stars in second place right now? (laughs) I think our, our focus is has truly been one game at a time and, and it feels most different to the going into the first game of the season, which is Orlando home, and to, to what it does now, which is Sky Blue uh, at home this Saturday. We've been very, very short-sighted in regards to our, our focus and, and looking at what's immediately ahead of us and making sure players are recovering physically, mentally, and, and then preparing for that, that huge challenge. You know, I, I knew that the... The league would be tight this year. I, I did not, and I don't know if anyone else did, predicted that it would be as competitive as it is. It's for sure the most competitive uh, league that I've been involved with in the NWSL the last three years. And um, it's, yeah, it's, it's got tougher and tighter, and every single game is, is immensely draining physically and, and mentally for the players. So it's, uh, you know, we've, we've had a tough stretch and we've got some important points on the board, but um, you know, it's no different, you know, than, than we were go back ten, eleven games ago when we we're leading to our first one. This is a huge one on, on Saturday for us and which presents new challenges and, and we're doing our best in getting ready for that. Well you're talking about that a little bit too, coach, with uh you going through a lot of tough matches. You've played eleven games. You're the only team in the league so far that hasn't lost a game yet. So does that add an extra even level more of pressure to continue to stay undefeated or is it something that you know you don't really tell your ladies too much to worry about and just go out and play the game? No, I've never talked about it. I've never discussed it. I, I do think that it's a it's a very uh, you know a lot of people don't like to have things like that. They feel it brings pressure. I mean, I'm the opposite. I think it puts pressure on other teams. I I think that when you're going up against a team like us that has the players and the, the organization and the grit and the battle and the toughness that we have, and then you know that they haven't lost a game. You know, you're, you're 60, 70 minutes in and um, you're playing against the Thorns. It's going to play on people's minds. And I say that because I've been there. I've been there on the other side of it when you're playing against a team who hasn't lost or hasn't lost at home. And, you know, you, it does play on your mind. And, you know, we're Orlando uh, on Sunday. We, I think we were uh, we were dead and buried when that goal went in. We had nothing in the tank. Mm-hmm. You know, I think fortunately that the goal... Uh, really angered our players, and the water break kind of saved us. We we managed to change some things tactically, but but the reaction from the individuals on the team, from our team, was huge. And then you wonder to you know Orlando, you wonder what crossed their mind, you know, when they won the up because they just they disappeared, they dropped, they scored, and and they their, their team kind of started to look like what ours did for the first eighty minutes. You know, it was it was for us, it was a really tough one after a long stretch of away games and. So it's, uh, you know, for us, I've never mentioned it, and I won't, you know, I won't. And I also won't talk about where we are in the league. I won't talk about points. We, we truly talk about what the, how we're recovering uh, from the previous game and how we're preparing for the next game. I think that's, that's truly been the objective each week, and it hasn't changed since day one. So, Mark, you're talking about the next game. You're at home which, uh, you know, lead, leading in attendance over 16,000 average there, which is awesome for this league. 
and you're you're taking on another team that's in the lower half. And as you said, it's a very competitive league, so whatever that matters. But you're taking on Sky Blue FC. What do you look forward to this game on Saturday, July second? Yeah, there's no. It's really hard to look at the league table and look at them and think that this is going to be easy or hard game. I remember going to Boston second game of the season, and and it was probably one of our most toughest games. We got out of there with a one nil win. It's one of our, um, you know, the, the tactical approach that Boston had, and you know, it's the hardest game. So you, you look at the table now, you would have thought, well, well, Boston was a, a, an easier game because they struggled a tiny bit and they'll bounce back. But it was our toughest. So then you look here, Sky Blue, they've just beat Washington. They should have beat Seattle at home the mm. week before. I mean, a team that has almost beaten two of the strongest teams in the league, yeah, it's going to be a huge challenge for us. And well, you know, we, while we're, we're ready for this challenge of, of missing some players, um, my, my trust and faith in the players that we have here is huge. You know, they've been here from the beginning. They've been here involved in every meeting and, and video and, and training session. Um, the one thing I can't, I can't do in, in six days or for, say, three training sessions is what we have this week. What I can't do in three days is build the, uh, say, the, the chemistry or the repetition, the hours that these players on Saturday, um, you know, I can't replace what Sky Blue's team has put together. I can't replace mm. the hours they've been in a match together, building those relationships. We can have a very different team, a very new team out there. And while I trust in the individuals hugely and they're, they're a great group of hardworking, talented players, we can't replicate the the hours that, you know, the, the group that played Orlando in, in on Sunday. That's a core group that spent a lot of competitive match minutes together. And there's a lot of there's a lot of non-verbal communication uh, that gets built where in training and games. And so we've got to try and we've got to try and build some of that in three days, which is which is the biggest challenge. And we'll do our best job. We'll prepare them to be tactically uh, organised, and you know, and and you you trust in the players executing and working as hard as they can, which they've shown. You know, they've shown every day in training, and they've shown in the Seattle game when when we lost our players then. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good challenge, but it'll be a big one. Well, speaking of, of players doing well this season, I mean, you just look at the stats leaderboard. You know, Lindsay's got four goals on the season, so she's up near the top. you got Tobin Heath leading the league with five assists. Uh, French, you know, three clean sheets on the season, only allowing six goals so far. It, it looks to us that, you know, overall you've, you've got this team – as you said, this core group of players just playing so well to get together. How do you keep that going for an entire season? Well, I, I would, what I'd say is our results have been uh, very strong, very, very good. Um, but we and we've got to be proud of that. Right? We've got to be pleased, but our performances can can improve. And um, I don't think that they could be much better than what they are with the circumstances we have had. You know, the toughest schedule in the league. We've had the most away games in the league. Mm. But it's not just the away games. It's that, you know, we went to the East Coast. For, we went to Chicago away. We stayed out there, went to New York away, came back, three-day rest, played Chicago at home. We then went back out to Orlando, the worst travel of the of the year for, you know, the opposite side of the country for us. And um, it's uh, it's been a huge challenge to do that. And we picked up some important points, but our performance can be better. And when you travel, you don't get to train. I remember speaking to the staff. Our last full training week was three and a half weeks ago before the Washington game. Mm. We believed that we had the right preparation before the Washington home game, which we won 4-1. Since then, we haven't. We have not had proper preparation for a game of football. And, and then you look at the oppositions we've played. we played New York away. I think we had two days on the road preparing for them. They had a, a seven-day build-up, um, a seven-day at home. So you, we haven't felt that for three and a half weeks. This week is going to be the closest to it, and we get three days. So it's it's there's, there's different challenges. What I think about our results, they they have been pretty extraordinary. But the cool thing is, I think our performances are are going to improve a lot. You know, this period here mm -hmm. with four games, I've got to build some chemistry very quick with our with our group and and have our tactical, you know, our tactical model will be slightly modified in, in, in our uh, approach to these four. So we've got to hammer that in. And, and then we uh, we welcome the players back later on and, and then we'll look a bit different again. So I think we can get better in performances. Uh, and, you know, that doesn't mean results get better. 
You know, we've we've had some extraordinary results. Yeah. But if we can improve our performance, I do believe it means that we keep momentum going. And the more we improve our performance, the more prepared we are for for the business end of the season. Those last three or four league games, which which will decide teams getting in playoffs. And then hopefully, you know, we're we're in a good place by the time playoffs come round, and we're in there um, with a, with a shout to to compete. Talking with head coach of the Portland Thorns, Mark Parsons, here on Two Up Front. Coach, we want to take you back across the pond for a moment before you made the jump over to the NWSL. You spent some time, uh, six seasons from my account, with uh, the Chelsea Football Club for their women's teams. Can you talk, and we always ask the players, too, that have done time in Europe or in Asia or any of those areas, too. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamics between the two leagues? I mean, you spent such a long time there. You've already been here in, in, in America for a while as well, too, looking at both very high-class leagues. Can you talk a little bit through about what it's like to be a part of both of those and maybe some differences if you've noticed any? Yeah, the biggest improvement from the FA WSL has happened in the last five, six years, and that's when I've been in America. So I can only... I can only comment on on the people that I speak to, the head coaches there, the the video, the games that I've watched when looking at players. I can't speak about when I was there. It was very different. It's it's improved and moved on a lot. A lot more clubs have invested more money. Uh, the FA has invested and continued to improve the women's game. So I haven't seen it firsthand. I think from from my subjective opinion of all the the things that I have uh, I know and been told, I think the league uh, has grown a lot. I think the difference between the FAWSL and, and the NWSL is the physicality, the speed, the um, the intensity, the, the the way that the players and the and the teams in this league work, and it's even how they train. You know, it's it's such a such a high intensity and high work rate. And I think the biggest thing is mentality. I, I remember, you know, I remember uh, being back in England and um, the mentality to improve your game, improve your physicality, improve your mental side. If anything you can do to, to be a better player, it was only okay. And, um, regards to coaches and players. And in America, I think that's one of the best things. Um, each player would do what it takes to improve that tiny percent. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, so I think that, you know, even with a man Dean from, from France joining one of the best, you know, coming from Lyon, one of the best clubs in Europe, just winning the Champions League, She's even discussed, she's been surprised with the speed, the intensity, the way that the players work and how, how hard they work. You know, the, on the flip side, you know, the French league, the English league it is more uh, focused on tactical and technical. Mm. You know, and when you have more tactical and technical focus, the speed will drop down a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, I think the difference is definitely the speed. And, and here, you know, it's, uh, I think for me and my team, we want, the most intelligent players here in Portland because we do want to play an intelligent style, an intelligent brand of soccer. And can we combine the technical, tactical things that you see across other leagues with with the fantastic physicality and speed and intensity of the, the American League? Um, you've seen Kansas and Seattle do that in the last two years. You've seen them combine the best of both worlds. And, you know, I think we've done that for this year as well. But we're just in the first stage. We're in the beginning stage. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a a long process to to become the team that we want to be and and then try and sustain that over multiple years. And Mark, continuing on with the uh, the theme of your career, when you were with Washington, you were both the GM and the head coach. Uh, now you've got, obviously, Gavin Wilkinson over there in Portland as your GM. Do you miss the GM role at all, or are you relieved to just be focusing on the coaching aspect of the game? No, I, I, when you have, I honestly think I've got the best GM in the league and one of the best GMs in the in the M- MLS. So, so I think that it's just been a an incredible, uh, you know, I say bonus and and transition because well, I think as a coach you're always going to have you're always going to do your homework and and, and on players and yeah, the way that you recruit and scout and identify. Um, but having a GM that's ex- experienced as Gavin just puts any of my scouting or, or recruitment or network or contacts, whatever I have, it puts it onto another planet because his experience, his knowledge, his his, um, his expertise in, in being a GM and looking at everything from different angles, short, medium, and long term. And, you know, so I think, you know, the, the basic skill set, and I mean that, I've been in the league for three years, my basic skill set, of of uh, of doing what I do, you know, I'm I'm not doing much, things much different from from what I was doing in Washington, 
But here, with that expertise, we're able to attract, you know, a different level of player. One, because of the club that, that I'm at now, but, but two, because of his knowledge and experience in in making that happen. So I think it's been a great, it's been a fantastic transition. I've, I've loved working with him and, and I and I think that it's it's uh, been a huge value to to help me be a bit more uh, effective. And um, I think for him, uh, I hope that I've added some to, to his skill set in, in the women's game. Um, now, I know I've learned a lot more from him than he has from me, and, but I think it's a good team and I've, I've, loved, I've loved every second. And also, you know, the, the only, you know, the positive part of the GM is to, is to players and signing and moving and uh, scouting players. You know, that's the cool part. There are other not so cool parts. And so I have, I've not missed those not so cool parts at all. And it, it's interesting. <laughs> Some of the coaches call and they, they ask me about this thing that might be going on in the league or that thing. And I, and I feel a bit refreshed because I haven't, I didn't know, I'm not stressed about it because I'm not necessarily aware of it yet. Because I don't, you know, I'm not on the phone calls and the emails as much now, and that's cool. That that's, a, I think, it's, a, it's the right setup. I, I I get to be fully focused on the team and the performance of the team. I've got the best GM in the country here, uh, mm. keeping an eye on what we're doing and our direction. But also, it's a, it's a huge collaboration. So I think it's a it's a dream partnership, and I'm and I'm fortunate to be a part of it. You can't argue with that when when the men's team is lifting an MLS Cup trophy last year, and the you know, women's team is first in the league at this point, undefeated. Yeah, it's a huge credit to what Gavin and, and Merritt Paulson have uh, been doing here over the last few years. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we appreciate you taking some time today to be with us on Two Up Front. Uh, if you are in the Portland area, go visit them. They haven't been home in a while, and I'm sure Coach is very excited about that. Uh, they take on Sky Blue FC on Saturday, July 2nd, and then on Saturday, July 9th as well, as they take on FC Kansas City as well. Coach, good luck to you the rest of the way, and uh, we hope to chat with you again later on in the season come playoff time. Yeah, thanks for your coverage of the women's game and appreciate your time today. Cheers, guys. Absolutely, Coach. Anytime. Thank you. Head coach of the Bye-bye. Portland Thorns, Mark Parsons, on the program with us. We will run to a break. When we come back, we've got more exciting action in store for you. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Stay with us. Welcome back inside the studio for another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. And we just had a great conversation with Portland Thorns head coach Mark Parsons. Thank you so much, Coach, for coming on the show. We appreciate it. It was nice to hear at the end of that interview, Simon, too, his comment about appreciating what we were doing about covering the league as well. And we didn't prompt him to say anything. That was just something he threw in there right at the end. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's very touching for us, obviously, when somebody recognizes what we're doing on the show. Somebody and, notable, too. And, exactly, right. I mean, Mark Parsons, he, when he's with the Washington Spirit, he turned that club around. Mm-hmm. He comes to Portland, who struggled last year. He's looking where he's got them now. Top of the league. You know, so for somebody of that reputation to, to understand what we're doing on Two Up Front is really remarkable. So, I agree. So thank you again, Coach, if, uh, if you're still listening to us. Thank you for that uh, recognition and comment. Absolutely. We appreciate that. All right, Simon, let's take a look. We have a very NWSL full show today. Our next segment, we actually have another interview with Houston Dash attacker Denise O'Sullivan, an Irish international as well. So we won't get too nwsl on you because we just had coach last segment. We've got Denise next segment. So we're just going to kind of breeze through quickly what happened last week, what happened, what's going to happen this week, and then we'll uh, let Denise do some more talking after that too. She's got a fantastic story and a very... Uh, it, it's... I'm not making fun of her accent, but it's just so much fun to listen to a true Irish person speak. And you'll understand when you hear the interview, too. I mean, it was, it was one of those things where it's like I, I, talking to her, it was just, I think the interview was just 100 times better. She could have just you know, said the same sentence 100 times the interview, but because she has an Irish accent, I was like, this is so much fun. Well, yeah, and, I mean, and you're sick of me trying to uh, do my <laughs> Irish accent for you. So. No, Simon, not at all. <laughs> I, not at all at all. No, but uh, an interesting week in NWSL, as it always is, Simon. Uh, the Portland Thorns, as we mentioned last week, uh, went out and beat the Chicago Red Stars 2-0 completely solidifying themselves five points clear of the Chicago Red Stars as the top of the league now. They have 23 points over, I believe it is, 11 games now. 
proving that they are clearly the best team, as we heard from Coach Parsons. Yeah, absolutely. They're still undefeated. And, uh, you know, the only team that can catch them, and maybe I'm jumping the gun here, Baxter, is the Washington Spirit. They uh, they could get up to How that. interesting. They could get up to that 23-point total. However, they went out and dropped one to Sky Blue FC. They did. I was a little surprised by that, but at the same time, I'm not, because as we've mentioned on the show a hundred times, I feel like we need a tally mark every time we see this, because Western New York Flash and Sky Blue FC, every single week, we have no idea what to expect. Although I think we're kind of figuring it out now with, with, with Western New York Flash a little bit. Of course we say that, but now we've got the Olympics coming up. <laughs> exactly, and then it's going to be like a 10-week break, and no one's going to know who anybody. Suddenly Boston's going to surge and beat everybody at the end of the year, which oh, I don't think is going to happen. Boston. Speaking of which, Western New York Flash, 7-1 thrashing of Boston. It was 2-1 when Boston scored. They scored. It was only 2-1. It's like, oh, plenty of time. I, you know, I think they would have much rather have lost 2-1 than losing 7-1. Because Western New York Flash didn't even look back. They started scoring in a bevy, and it just, I mean, what can you honestly say about it? Credit to Jessica McDonald. That's I right. Feel like. That's right. Jessica McDonald, named player of the week, and rightfully so. Tally to hat trick, only the ninth in league history, back to the only, only the ninth. Really? Ninth hat trick in league more. history. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, she took this team by storm. Obviously, all around effort from everyone on the team, including yet we see another goalkeeper. For uh, for New York Flash, they played their third goalkeeper mm, for this mm, game mm. Um, because of Sabrina D'Angelo being still injured. She's injured. She's out with uh, with the Canadian team for um, you know for Olympic training yep. and and uh, Ekstrom, who's one of their other fantastic goalkeepers, had to stay out. I'm losing the name here, Baxter. I had it up on my screen, and my computer just froze. Oh no! But anyways, just you know, an all out team effort, seven to one, and congratulations again to Jessica McDonald yeah. again, name player of the week in the NWSL. That's absolutely huge. I feel like uh, other games, FC Kansas City and the Seattle Rain battled to a scoreless draw, a game that both teams really couldn't afford to lose, and neither did. No, and uh, kudos to Hope Solo, her first shout-out of the season. Yeah, and the fourth consecutive shout-out for the Seattle Reign as well. If they notch a shout-out in their upcoming game against Boston, which likely will happen, they will uh, achieve the NWSL league record for five consecutive shout-outs. Oh, how about they that? will not achieve the most amount of minutes uh, without conceding a goal, unfortunately. They'll miss it by two minutes, even if they shut out the entire game, but Chicago has that record still. So... We'll see if they're able to, to capitalize on that maybe in the latter week. But um, Seattle and FC Kansas City tying, as we mentioned, 0-0. Zero, or zero, zero. Uh, With that, I mean, Seattle, they hang out in seventh place now in the standings. They've got 13 points. They're 3-3-4. Three, three, and four. FC Kansas City right behind them with 10 points, 2-4-4. Four, and four. Not the team really of allowing that many goals this year. They've only each allowed seven goals total. But to the same cost, though, those goals that they have allowed have been costly goals at the same time. And Seattle has really done... Not a lot with not a lot at the same time because Jess Fishlock has been in and out with injury and national team cops. Megan Rapino hasn't played a minute all year. Hope Solo has been back and forth. You talk about all these different players for Seattle that have been back and forth all season long, and they're not doing poorly. They're, like I said, they're a win away from being in the top five. So they have 13 points. If they win, they would catapult over Orlando, and they would move into fifth place, which in NWSL is huge. Absolutely. And speaking of Orlando, we, we just talked about Portland. We've got to talk about them again. Of they course. played their second game in five days. Head down to Orlando, Florida. And this is the crazy thing. They've been traveling so much. We've actually been working with their uh, public relations head to try to get interviews. And We've been trying for three months, yeah, two months, Yeah, and it's been understandable like because yeah. they come home for a few days, then they're gone. Players but, don't want to talk to anybody. They barely want to talk to, the, to their families. They're like, I just want to sleep. Right. Just let me sleep. <laughs> and as we heard from Coach Parsons, they've barely had time to train. Yet yeah. they go down to Orlando, who plays fantastic at, at home, yep. undefeated at home. And what does Portland do? They hand them their first loss at home. To After keep their... Orlando scored first late. To this Very wasn't late, like this right. was a thing where Orlando, you know, Portland had the lead and Orlando tied it. No, Orlando scored late in the game and Portland found two goals. We heard from Coach Parsons, literally nothing left in the tank. Right. Nothing. They right. were just gassed and somehow they found a way to win the game. Right. Of course, you get somebody like Christine Sinclair who, who knows if she'll ever retire. I don't think so. Man, it's, it, she is just She is the Canadian amazing. Abby Wambach, I feel like. Yeah, she really is. Even more so, I would say, because she just she, she, keeps she, going. She actually uses her feet to That's score. Right. That's right. <laughs> and Abby just uses her head. So she, uh, you know, she starts what ended up becoming a, uh, a fantastic goal um, to uh, Haran, who Perfectly yeah. play shot, right side of the net, in the 90th minute, 
to give Portland the win in that game. I agree. I think it's a fantastic thing. One other thing I want to mention, too, before we jump to this week's game, Simon, uh, this week uh, it just been announced that six NWSL clubs have been admitted to the U.S. Soccer Girls Development Academy. Those six teams are the Boston Breakers, Orlando Pride, Portland Thorns, Seattle Rain, Sky Blue, and the Washington Spirit Academy, among many others. But those yeah, are the we'll, six NWSL teams. We'll see how that works out for people who haven't been following it. There's actually been a lot of controversy with U.S. soccer mm-hmm. starting this development academy for the women because a lot of people are saying, hey, what we're doing actually works for women's soccer. We keep winning gold medals. We keep winning World Cups. It's hard to argue uh, with that. And, and then there's the ECNL, the Elite Club National League, who really has a problem with this because what they're claiming is that basically U.S. soccer's taken their model mm-hmm. and uh, – you know, won't work with the ECNL. So, not to get off topic, but but just a little bit of history there. So, it'll be interesting to see how these NWSL clubs do in this development academy. I think so, and it might be only a matter of time until we see many more NWSL teams oh, I think working so. their way in. Yeah. We see that happen in MLS with, with all their uh, academy teams yep. as well. Exactly. All right, uh, taking a look at this upcoming week of action, the Houston Dash are off again, which I think is a very smart thing for them. They are desperate for some rest. Uh, Western New York Flash will take on the Chicago Red Stars, a, a game that will be a lot of fun to watch, Simon. I feel like you've got two of the best teams in the league duking it out, and uh, Chicago, they have had opportunities in the past to uh, to assert themselves at the top of the table, but now they're five points behind Portland, so a win here would be huge for their confidence. Yeah, Baxter, and uh, you know, it's it's all about the big stars, and, and we shall see, you know, Chicago, as we've talked about, Chicago doesn't have many, but they certainly rely on Kristen Press to get those goals. If she can continue her magic, we may see, we may see a win here. Of course, they played on April 23rd, and Chicago came ahead in that game 1-0 over the true. Western New York I don't Flash. know if Press will be available for this game due to a uh, U.S. camp, though, at, at this point. I, I don't know when those players go. I don't either. Yeah, so we'll, yeah, have to, we shall see. we'll have to keep an eye on that one. But uh, if this could be an opportunity, though, for New York, who are tied on points with Chicago, to hop over Chicago as well and become into second place. So something to keep in mind, something to keep an eye on. Uh, Saturday has a full slate of games. The Spirit play FC Kansas City, a game that actually has some meaning because FC Kansas City uh, is on a four, uh, is is continuing to to slowly work their way back into being relevant in the league. They've yeah. only won two games. But they've done a good job recently of not losing games either. They've had a couple draws, which have benefited them. And um, I think going up against a team like Washington, who are still stunned that they lost last week, this is a good opportunity for FC Kansas City to get even more confidence and beat a team, quote-unquote, that much better than them. Right, but I think what we're going to see is just the opposite, is that the Spirit had a loss to a surprising Sky Blue FC last week. I mean... Yes, this league is really tight this year, but that was Sky Blue's only third win in 10 games. Mm-hmm. And to beat a team like Washington really was a shock. And I, I think we'll see the opposite happen where Washington wants to go out there now, especially being back at home, mm-hmm. back in Maryland. They're, they're going to want to win this game. I agree. I completely agree with you on that one. I think this is going to be something that Washington steps up. They've won five games this year, as you mentioned. I mean, they're 3-1-1 one, one at home this year, 2-1-1 one, one on the road. This is a spirit team that knows how to put the ball in the back of the net consistently, and I think they're going to do just that against a still struggling FC Kansas City team. Speaking of struggling, as we mentioned, the Boston Breakers, they take on the Seattle Reign. Boston last week, I want to I've, I want to give credit to Western New York Flash for winning that game 7-1, but at the same time, they played the worst team in the league, a team that now has conceded 22 goals this year and only scored three. Don't read too much into the fact of Western New York Flash being such a dominant elite team. That's great. They've got six wins. They're tied with Portland for the most wins in the league. I'm not selling, I'm not buying Western New York Flash fully yet. I've certainly started to talk to my stockbrokers about investing in the future, but I have not purposely <laughs> invested anything in them yet. Are you investing in Western New York I'm Flash? I'm investing in Western are you? New York Flash. Uh, a full? A lot? Are you, are you selling well, one of your daughters? No, to, no, no, to no, 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 no. Listen, you've got to diversify your portfolio. You sold the dog, you know, my, my team will always, I shouldn't say always, uh, but it's hard for me to see myself not cheering for Portland. Of course. Uh, but New York, as we were just talking about, they're well-rounded. They and are. they really have figured things out. I agree. So it, it's, it's, it's easy for me to buy what they're doing. Because they don't have a ton of elite stars. But at the same time, they're getting it done. It doesn't matter if you've got elite stars. If you've got players that know how to play together and are still winning games at the end of the day, that's all that matters. But it's not like they're lacking good players no, either. You know, I they've mean, scored 20 goals this but, year. Of course, you know, Sabrina D'Angelo, 
She was playing great when she was healthy. Of course, yeah. she, you know, she broke her wrist. But you got players like Sam Mewis in there, Adriana Leon, you know, national team players mm-hmm. for their respective countries. Of so I, I think actually what we see in Western New York Flash is a lot of these players who are good players that were just the, the spotlight doesn't shine on them mm-hmm. from an international perspective. I agree. No, I completely agree with you on that one. So. Something to keep in mind, though, with Western New York Flash. But a Seattle-Boston game, do you have a prediction for that one? Is Seattle going to just probably walk all over Boston? It's, it's, it's a too, home game. Yeah, it's it's too easy to say Seattle. It's too easy to say it? So you yeah. are going to say Seattle? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought you were maybe yeah. alluding to it. It was too easy to say it. Right, so you which is usually to... what I do. I get that. Yeah, but... you're like, it's too easy, so I'm going to choose completely the opposite, or I'm going to pick a draw. But thankfully, you're not doing that. And then finally, uh, Portland and Sky Blue. What do you think about that game? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, Sky Blue? I don't know. I never know no, Sky Blue. Sky Blue does surprise teams, but, man, Portland's going to be loving that they're back at home. That's true. For the next two games as well. That's true. So I'm going to go with Portland. Okay. How about yourself? I'm going to have to agree with you on that okay. one, too. I mean, I'd like to. I'd love, I'd love to see the upset purely just from a standings perspective. It would shake things up for sure. Sky Blue would piggyback over Orlando and be in that uh, that sixth spot. So, I mean, it would help them a little bit. But Washington still obviously is ahead of them. Actually, they put them in fifth place. So, I don't know. But uh, yeah. Portland is going to come away with the victory, I feel like. You know, the U.S. does play South Africa on a July 9th friendly at Soldier Field, Baxter. So, I'm not sure if what these... What am I doing uh, July 9th, Simon? Are you busy July 9th? I'm You're in Oregon. Shoot. Yeah. I think I have... Oh, I'll be at a torrent game. Darn. <laughs> be getting paid to talk about soccer. Shoot. Oh, man. I'd rather Tough watch deal. the women, but that's fine. Maybe they can pay me to do the games. That'd be fine. There I'd be go. fine with that. Ian Dark can retire any day. No. Anyways, my biggest point being, I'm not sure when the women are going to be called in. That's true. We'll see what happens. All right, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, Denise O'Sullivan of the Houston Dash and Irish international team will be here with myself uh, for a quick little interview. And then we've got so much more to stick to as well. U.S. Open Cup, MLS, Power Rankings, and I Believe, and all that to close out the show. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back inside the studio for another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. Joining me now on the line is Houston Dash forward and Irish international Denise O'Sullivan here for our women's soccer spotlight on the program. Denise, good afternoon and welcome to Two Up Front. Hey, how are you? Thanks so much. You're Thanks very... for having me on the show. Absolutely. I'm glad to have you on, Denise. Well, uh, a couple of things I feel like we need to talk about with you today as we've got you for, for a couple minutes here on the show. Uh, a big thing right away is uh, that disappointing loss that you guys had against the Orlando Pride. Uh, a 1-0 loss just very recently in extra time. You were on the field. You guys had some good opportunities there towards the end as well, but uh, it just kind of came undone mm-hmm. at the end. Uh, what did you see during that game, and uh, how ultimately did you guys end up, unfortunately, falling to the Orlando Pride? Um, yeah, it was a pretty intense game. Um, it was kind of an end, end, end-to-end game, to be honest. Uh, both teams were just, you know, on the ball. And, you know, I think both teams got chances. I think we had the better chances, to be fair, and... You know, we just didn't put them away again and they got a couple of chances and in the last minute they scored there. So they found the back of the net and we didn't. So it's another loss for us, unfortunately. Yeah, talking about this team as a whole, there's a lot of talent on the Dash team and that's something myself and my co-host have been fairly critical about this entire season is the amount of talent mm-hmm. that Houston has. is It's a little surprising that you guys aren't doing better. Is Is there something that we're missing? Is there something that's happening internally that we don't know about? Or is it just so many new faces that you ladies are all just still trying to figure each other out early on in the year? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we have absolutely fantastic talent. Um, I really don't know what's going on now at the moment. There's, something, there's just something not clicking. Um, I think... In the last two games, we've been playing excellently. We've been playing really well and creating chances. And, you know, it's frustrating because we've been doing well and we just can't, just up the end of the other side of the pitch, we can't, you know, score. So, I don't know. I think that's something everyone has to work on and, you know, just try and finish our, finish our chances more. But there's nothing really else going on. I think that's the only thing. There is a lot of new faces in the team and, you know, it's a pretty it's a pretty new team this year. So... I think we're all trying to still get used to each other and used to the way we play, but hopefully we can, you know, sort things out and turn it around. 
Well, you certainly have the the talent to do that. I mean, as you mentioned, though, with uh, with putting the ball in the back of the net, you've had six different players score this season. You've got six total goals. You yourself have scored once this season as well. Bring me back to that first goal, mm-hmm. if you don't mind, for that for a moment there, when you scored your first goal in the NWSL. Yeah. Talk about the emotion. Talk um, about everything. Mm-hmm. It was against Kansas City away from home. Um, I actually came on a half time, and I think it was it might have been only a couple of minutes into the into the half when I just scored a goal. Um, we were down there and and she uh, bicycle kicked overhead and I was just there to get on the end of it. And I don't know, it was just crazy. It was my first goal. It was, it was great to even, you know, come on, but then scoring was something, something big for me and I was delighted. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to get a few more goals this season. I was also, we'll see. You make it sound mm-hmm. like it was just yeah, no big deal. It's just like I scored, I scored my first goal, no big deal. Just another day at the <laughs> office. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's obviously. I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine being in your position. Of course, you know, scoring you know that first goal, but that I think that speaks to the level of professionalism, though, that you and other players that we've talked to here on the show as well. It's you score your goal, you that's, mm-hmm. that's your job. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do as a forward. Yeah, you put the ball in the back of the exactly. net, and uh, you keep trying to make your team better each and every day. Talk a little bit about what it's like. You've got gals on your team like Rachel Daly, I mean, Carly Lloyd when she's healthy, Becca Moros. The list goes on and on. What's it like to be surrounded by so many dynamic and attacking players and even defenders as well on your team? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I'm surrounded by absolutely, you know, great players um, that play with different national teams. I have players that play with Brazil, Canada, the US, England. You know, we've a lot of different nationalities on the team and I think for me I'm an, an attacking player and I'm surrounded by great you know technical players and I love that because I just love to play football I love to get the ball down and pass it around and I think that's the kind of team we are so it's great to be surrounded by them players and obviously when Carly comes back I haven't played with Carly Lloyd yet and you know that's really exciting and I can't wait you know to play with her so you know it's great and you know I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Talking with Denise O'Sullivan of the Houston Dash and the Ireland women's international team as well here on Two Up Front. Denise, let's switch gears for a little bit. Just step away from the NWSL. Let's talk about it. You've been called up a lot recently to the Irish, uh, the, the Iron, uh, the Ireland women's national team a couple times. Uh, talk a little bit about that experience. I mean, that's anytime you get the opportunity to represent your country, I'm sure that's got to be an extra sense of pride for you and being able to have your family and friends. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there as well, cheering you on. No, it's absolutely fantastic. I love, I love putting on the green jersey. It's just a sense of pride, and you know, um, my whole family is proud of me that I'm, you know, playing national team, and I'm there now to see. I have fifty one caps with the senior national team. I'm Incredible. there since I'm seventeen years old. Yeah, so it feels like I've been there forever. To be honest, <laughs> I'm still only twenty two. So, <laughs> so hopefully, I have another, you know, a lot of caps under my belt to go. But um. No, I love playing for my country, and every time I put on the jersey, I give 100% on the field, so it's great, yeah. Talk to us a little <laughs> bit about the difference. I mean, you played for, for Glasgow City Football Club before you came to the NWSL. Talk a little bit about the difference between the leagues, and that's something we always try to ask different players when they come on that have you know played mm-hmm. in Australia or Sweden or anywhere else mm-hmm. besides the NWSL. Talk a little bit about the, the differences between the leagues. Oh, I think um, having played in Scotland and then coming to America this it's just a huge difference, to be honest. Um, I think, you know, the physicality, the speed of the league here, you know, the technic- the technical ability of some players is just, you know, it's, ju- it's just better in all aspects of the game and stuff like that. And, you know, d- no disrespect to the, the Scottish League. I loved playing there and I loved uh, the club Glasgow City and it was great. I got to play in Champions League as well, so that was another big thing. But, um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, I think... The big thing for me is the physicality of the league. I'm a small player, and you know that's what I that's what I think that's what I need to improve on. So coming to America, I could see straight away, like I I was actually like, whoa, I need to <laughs> definitely improve on my <laughs> the physical aspect of my game. So I think it's good for me though that I can I can improve on that, and I'm in the gym every week and. It's great. So, yeah, I think that's the difference. Well, I think that, that, that speaks not only to the women's game, but the men's game, too. You hear any different player from, from Europe or Asia that comes over and plays in the NWSL or MLS, and they say, I think that's the number one thing you hear almost immediately. It's like, oh, how do you like you know the league? It's very physical. They like to hit each other a lot over here. It's mm-hmm. like, well, that's, that is kind of how the no, game is transformed. Yeah. But you're also very notable for being a rather quick player, too. So I'm sure having that extra bit of speed can certainly get you out of those rough and tough situations at times as well 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think for me, I'm a more technical player, so I can I can get out of them situations when I come up against a strong player. I'm probably that bit quicker, and I can just get out of you know tight situations. So I think that's good from my point of view. Yeah. One thing I'm curious about you you mentioned you're you're 22 years old. You've played in a couple of different club leagues. You've played at the international level for 51 times. Are you tired? You you're only 22. Like <laughs> I feel like you you've done so much. I feel like I would be worn out by now if I was you. Um no, I'm I'm not because I love it. You know, I love it so much. It just doesn't you know, it doesn't affect me in that way. I do you do get tired when you're training so much and obviously from the change from going to Scotland to America, playing in the league and the differences, your body would be tired. But um, I don't really think about it. I just, you know, get on with it and I train. And it's just it's just a hobby for me. And I love the game, so I don't really feel that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, though. I mean, that, I think that, that'll make Dash and, mm-hmm. uh, and Ireland uh, fans happy to know that they've got you for hopefully a very long time as well. Uh, a couple other things I'm, I'm mm-hmm. curious about, Denise. Uh, one of the things I found out about you when, you when you played back in Scotland, you actually weren't even paid enough to just do that. You actually had to have a, a part-time job, if I understand. Is, if that, is that correct? Um, yeah, well, the pay was never, it was never going to be great in Scotland. There's not much, you know, there's not much money in it over there and stuff. So, um, I just went away and got myself a part-time job in a cafe. It was <laughs> even, yeah. That's, that's just incredible to <laughs> even think just, about. <laughs> yeah, even just to do something during the day and, you know, just do something rather than football. So, that's what I done and, you know, it was fine. I only... I think I only had it for a month or so, and then I left for the dash. So okay. it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> were you? Yeah. What, what did you do at the cafe? Were you? A, were you a barista? Were you a server? What did you do? Yeah, I was just a server basically, and then, you know, I was cleaning up. I was on the tills. I done a bit of everything, to be honest. Yeah. Were fans that would go to the games be like, "Wait a minute, weren't you just on the field, like playing in a Champions League game? What are you doing here, serving me lunch?" <laughs> Um, yeah, they would be asking me why are you working and stuff like that. So. No, I just love the fans so much. Yeah. I wanted to give back to you to the fans. You know, that's yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> well, one of the things, I, one of the thing I want to ask you about Denise, and um, it's no secret around the anyone that follows you for even more than thirty seconds is the relationship that you had with your father for such a very long time uh-huh. and how supportive he was. For those of us that don't know as much, can you walk us through just briefly? I don't want to, you know, I don't want you to have to get too depth mm-hmm. in depth if you don't want to, but talk a little bit about what it was like to, I mean, the man that was your father, he seemed to be a remarkable person from everything that I've been able to kind of gather about him. Yeah, he definitely was. Um, he was my number one supporter, to be honest, all the years growing up. He just, you know, he encouraged me and like, he just loved me playing soccer. He was so supportive. He he bought me my first pair of football boots. He put me into, I started off with a boys team and, you know, he put me into that boys team and stuff like that. And he just, you know, he just really looked after me really well along with my mom as well. And I, I think that's that's why I'm here today because because of him being so supportive. So, uh, yeah, just going back three months, yeah, three months ago, he passed away. He got really sick and I was actually in Glasgow at the time Um I was playing with Glasgow City and I got a phone call saying, you know, he had to go into hospital. And I used to, I used Skype him all the time. But I used to be on Skype to him and he texted me one day saying, oh, I'm going into hospital. I don't feel well. So, you know, mm. give me a call if you need anything. And um, so he went in and then my sisters rang me and said, you know, your dad's after getting diagnosed with cancer. So oh, wow. that was a, a big, yeah, it was a big shock. And he only had three weeks. It was three weeks later and, you know, um. I was on the way back from the Cyprus Cup actually with my national team and mm. all my teammates left and I was in London and my sister rang me and said, can you come back straight away? Cause like he only has hours to live. Mm. And I was, it was so, yeah, it was such a shock. Did you make it back um, I don't think any of us, I did. I made it oh, back okay. on the Thursday night. I slept, I slept in the hospital with him for three nights and wow. then he passed away this Sunday morning. Yeah. So. It was kind of a big shock to all of us. We weren't expecting it at all because it all just happened so fast. So, mm. you know, it was it was a sad time, yeah. But um, yeah. it makes it a bit harder being away from home and stuff. My mom back home's in the house on her own, but, you know, she's more, she's even, you know, she was more supportive and she loves me over here. So 
it's it's good from her, yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic. I mean, well, that's great to hear, though, that, yeah. it, that the family has continued to, to rally together. And anybody that follows you on any social media, you're very open and honest about, you know, what it, your, how much your family means to you and how much your dad means to you. And I think mm-hmm. that that's that's so important and so incredible. I mean, my, my playing career did not last nearly as long as yours has so far. But, I mean, for me, the biggest thing that mm-hmm. I always told people, and you hear from so many different athletes, their their support from their mom and their dad is, is what got them through so many different things. And, uh-huh. Being able to hear just being able to hear that from you too, who's already done so much at such a young age, I think is just absolutely remarkable. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Do you have you. any Do you have anything <laughs> that you do to to commemorate your dad at all? A tattoo or anything at all, or a shirt or a band or anything that you um, wear? Um, well, I have a photo that I take with me at all times in the locker room and stuff, and I actually have a little a bedside thing next to me with all his photos and. Mm. Just before, just before I left, my sister got me a book made up of, you know, me and my dad and stuff just to have with me when I'm away. So, yeah, I have a lot of things that I remember him and of, and you know, so it's good. It's good in that way. Well, fantastic. Well, Denise, I really appreciate you taking mm-hmm. time to talk to us here on Two Up Front today. Uh, you know, we wish you the best of luck and uh, Houston Dash as well, and uh, we hope to have you on the program again in the future if it works out. No problem. Thanks a million for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> We are going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got much more in store for you here on Two Up Front. Stay with us. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Moving right along with another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. Oh, Simon Provan. I thought maybe you'd come in with an Irish accent after Danny So Sullivan last night. Well, segment. you know, it's very easy to do that for me. I, uh, sometimes I feel I'm a bit of an Irish man myself. Yeah, you know. I feel like it. It's the, it's the but, black uh, hair that gives it away. Right. Really. And the red beard the red, that I that's, that's, the, that's what Of more. course, it's more gray these days, you know. <laughs> Having children will do that to you, Simon. I, uh, <laughs> my wife has already found gray hair in my head, and I'm like, we don't even have our children born yet. I don't. Thankfully, I got a haircut. Most of it went away, and then Just for Men works wonders as well. <laughs> no, I'm not using Just for Men. I am 24 <laughs> years old. I do not need Just for Men just quite yet. I don't know if I ever actually will do that. Do you do, you do anything to your hair, no. Simon? Say, it looks fine. Do no. you have gray hair? I have gray hair. I've got Somewhere. a lot of it growing in on the sides. Tucked no. away. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm not like tucking away. Gray. Whatever. You know, I'm going gray. Just embrace it. Yeah. Maybe the salt and pepper maybe at yeah. one point. Exactly. Interesting. Interesting. All right, Simon. Well, let's talk briefly about the U.S. Open Cup, a tournament that I know you like to, to eke and geek and go all 90s schoolgirl on. Um, so no, similar, similar. 90s boy band. 90s on. boy band. Well, <laughs> I tried to make us forget about that for a moment, but... Um, <laughs> You, uh, you Let's enjoy- embrace it, man. There's not, you know. I have no problem with it. It's yeah. just funny. If you want to talk about, I mean, it's, I know it's not from the '90s, but for some reason, when you say U.S. Open Cup, it just screams '90s for some yeah? reason. Huh. Just, maybe like that's- 1890s. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's been around for <laughs> well, eons. 1914, I believe, is when it was founded. Let me push my glasses back up. Pretty okay, sure there, there was a go. depression when it came out, or a world war was taking world place. World war, yes, the Great War. Anyways, big news for Fort Lauderdale. This is why I love this tournament. The Strikers come out and upset Orlando City. So, Baxter, this actually was a a very big win for them because they and the Cosmos were still in this. And basically it became the NASL Bowl for them in that because Fort Lauderdale won, they actually get, and granted for professional soccer, this may not be a huge amount, but $15,000 in award money no matter what happens now. That's huge. Because they are the uh, furthest advancing Division Two side. So every every level of the furthest advancing amateur side, the furthest advancing Division Three side and Division Two side, mm-hmm. they each get... Some cash. Some cash. Which is being, great. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, the Cosmos almost pulled that off. The Revolution, thankfully, found a winner, thankfully, late from Kai Kamara to Teal Bunbury for the final game-winning goal to make it 3-2. But I honestly thought the Cosmos were going to beat the Revolution. They looked flat. They looked boring. They didn't look like they wanted to be there. The Revolution yeah, looked that way. And then the Cosmos came out and scored early. And they were even up 2-1, but then thankfully the Revs put it together. Kai Kamara got his first team goal finally, which I hope helps him in league play now. And then Teal Bunbury with the game-winning goal in the 80-plus minute as well to, to put the game away. So now they'll play the Philadelphia Union, who, after Chris Pontius' late goal, beat the Red Bulls 2-1. So they will play them in Boston uh, on July 20th. Right, and as uh, going back to the Fort Lauderdale game, so Fort Lauderdale came out early and scored a goal uh, <coughs> off of Jose Angulo, he beat uh, Earl Edwards Jr., who was playing a goal in the 12th James minute. James Earl Jones? James Earl Jones. 
This is CNN. Uh, <laughs> Orlando, but Orlando came back three minutes later off of, of course, a Kevin Molino goal. He's been hot in the yeah. league play this year. And it looked like this game was going to go into uh, penalty kicks, but in extra time, Fort Lauderdale put the second goal away. <sighs> Crazy. I love it. I love 120 it. 120-minute goal. 120th minute goal. It's so hard to say CFC because you don't really see all that. all over again. Exactly. Basically. Right. Yeah. Well, good for them, though. I mean, it's nice to see them. They will play the Chicago Fire, who beat the Columbus Crew, thanks to a David Ackham goal as well. So uh, Once again, another name that All of these games you... were, were pretty close, barring the Houston Dynamo sporting Kansas City game. That was a 3-1 spanking, basically. Um but Sporting Kansas yeah, and City. Yeah, just... Houston led the whole way. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's and Sporting Kansas City almost lost to Minnesota United that previous round. Right. So it was just, right. it was due. So. And, you know, this tournament, it, it's always a matter of who's actually playing their best players and, mm-hmm. and who's holding some back. We saw that in the Portland Timbers LA Galaxy game. Uh, I'm not making an excuse for them because both teams played uh, a little. A little down with their rosters. They of didn't course, have many yeah. of their stars Bruce out there. Bruce Arena is known and, for doing that. But I, I give the Galaxy credit because Bruce Arena is also known for dogging out of the Champions League, for dogging out of definitely yeah. this tournament. But Which is they so went, weird. It is. But uh, What are you going to do? But they played in Portland, and it was, I believe, a sold-out game, which is so great to see for an Open Cup, especially yeah. if you're an Open Cup fanboy like of I am. Of course. Fanboy! Woo-hoo. Uh, but yeah, the Timbers were playing their third-string keeper, and uh, it cost them. Yeah, Galaxy ends up winning one zero. It was only one zero, but at the same time, they lost at the end of the day. Yeah, you know? and well, and the the disappointing thing is that the Galaxy scored in the fifth minute by Raúl Mendiola. Ah, of course, right, Raúl. Mendiola. Raul. What a guy. <laughs> So that fantasy. just goes to show. But that's part of the reason I actually love this tournament, Baxter, yeah. is you get to see these players who are either on the reserve teams or on the bench a lot finally get some playing time, yeah. and, and they can show what they can do. I agree. I completely agree. FC Dallas found a victory over the Colorado Rapids as well, so now we'll have the, the, the Texas brawl, basically. Houston will play FC Dallas in their uh, their quarterfinal. Yes, quarterfinal. That's where we're at. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the Seattle Sounders had to go all the way to penalty kicks with RSL and finally beat them. By a score of 4-1 to in penalty kicks, and they will now play the LA Galaxy. And real quick, I do want to give credit to FC Dallas because they actually were playing some of their top guys. Diaz mm-hmm. was involved. Uh, Castillo was involved. That's, you know, and that was after that's extra cool time, to too. This is another game that went into extra time. Yeah, and that's that, uh, like you said, a lot of these games were close. And again, that's what the Open Cup provides, these great close games. And it's a knockout tournament. It's a ticket to the CONCACAF Champions exactly. League. So why not go for it? Well, you, uh, yeah, it makes sense to me. You don't have to. You don't have to fight for, <laughs> fight, fight me for it. I mean, why not? I would play my best players the whole way through. I don't know why you wouldn't. But uh, it's great to see that um, you know the teams that have gone through have gone through. So the Revolution will play Philly, Chicago will play Fort Lauderdale, Houston will play FC Dallas, and the Galaxy will play the Sounders. All of those games, July twentieth. Now, Baxter. Usually at this point, we'd say, "All right, who are you taking?" Now, that's the one thing that's incredibly difficult to do in an Open Cup because you don't know who's playing. No. So I say we skip that part I think of the process. So. I think so. Well, uh, I'd say even at the final, I wouldn't even know. So, I mean, may the best team win at this point, honestly. Yeah. If the Revolution continue to go forward, good on them. But at this point, go Fort Lauderdale, right? Exactly. I love the underdog. Go for it. Now, that, it. now that the Timbers are out, I'm cheering for Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Might as well send Simon a scarf now if any of you are Fort Lauderdale fans. All right, we'll go to a break. When we come back... We will jump into MLS a little bit more in depth and uh, take a look back. Uh, NYCFC doing surprisingly well. Portland uh, doing well as as well, I guess. Well as well. And uh, the Revolution, you were right, Simon. They don't know how to win on the road, especially against rival DC. We'll talk about that and more when we come back. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back inside the studio. Two up front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm back star. <laughs> I got nothing. Simon. This is Simon. Simon is and back star from the 90s. Two up front. We got to record a jingle. <laughs> we do. Oh, my gosh. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen to the beginning of the show. Uh, MLSsoccer.com called us a, a, a name that you would hear of a 90s boy band. 
Yeah, yeah, the the, the soccer a, podcast with the name that sounds most like a 90s boy band name, basically. I love it, man. It's a, it's I totally a, embrace it's it. It's a backhanded compliment. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think it's a compliment I mean, we at have all, to but have, I'll like, take it. Wear, like, holes in our jeans and stuff like that. Like, what was, I don't even remember what the night I did. I get frosted tips on, like, my hair here now. <laughs> Baxter, or? at that point, I was listening to Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana. <laughs> I had nothing to do with boys' bands. Uh, yeah. Boy I, bands. See, I can't even say it right. Bands. What, is, what is the plural of boy bands? Boy bandai? I don't even know. <laughs> just, I, I just make everything plural. Now, I, I will say, I do enjoy some Justin Timberlake here or there. I do, too. Okay, I but, he's, always, but, he's been timeless, I feel But like. he also has more of that Michael Jackson feel does, to his I sound. I like. Yes. Yeah. I can understand yeah. where you're coming from on that one. I can also understand where you're coming from, too, when you talk about how D.C. United was going to beat New England, which I should have listened to you by, but I was like, no, Simon, the Revolution are playing well. <laughs> they would never <laughs> curse their two-game win streak. Yes, they would. And they did, and they lost 2-0 to D.C. United. Shockeroo. But what are you going to do? That's, that's What are you going to do? I don't know. Hey, by the way, Baxter, real quick. This yes. kind of relates to the Open Cup, but not really. But it does relate to NASL. Okay. NYCFC sold Cuadro Poco, who was yeah. supposed to be one of their rising stars, yeah. to the NASL uh, Miami FC. Good for them. I know. I saw that that was a rumor for a while, and now it officially has taken place. I know. I was really upset because Poco was supposed to be this big deal in MLS this year. Everybody was raving about him, and then Patrick Vieira came in, and he never really heard from him yeah, very much. Yeah, sayonara. Might have been a little bit of injury. I don't really know, or just... Well, and they're saying that Miami made them an offer they couldn't refuse. I'd love to know what that offer was. We'll find out in 10 years. <laughs> yes. Probably. Yes. After he retires, we'll find out what that number was. Cheese. Speaky. <laughs> Lots of cheers. They gave Patrick Vieira some croissants. That's right. So they're like, take him. <laughs> Go ahead. Speaking oh. of NYCFC, they handballed their way past Seattle 2-0. <laughs> I actually saw the Frank Lampard goal. I was uh, getting my hair cut at Sport Clips. Shameless plug. Sport Clips. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, even my and my wife, too, was watching. We watched it. And even, even she believed it was a handball as well, too, because she was actually, I think she pointed out even before I did, I was like, oh, that was a nice goal. She's like, oh, I think that was a handball. Mm. And then we were, so she's learning. She's, she's a smart gal. Well, he sold it well. <laughs> You know, they did. I mean, it was. It happened so fast, and I can understand it. I don't, but. and I, I honestly don't think that it was intentional. No, it, I don't it think just so. it hit his hand and went in. But when it goes in the goal, to me, instant replay. Oh wait, well, you can't yeah. throw the challenge flag on a but goal. But the in thing soccer. is, you know, the thing is, in the spirit of the law, was it a handball? Mm. You know, the, his hand was tucked in. And it, it was, was by more his of side. like a shoulder top. Muscle. Well, I think I think it actually hit his actual hand, but Did it's it? not like he reached. No. I didn't see him reach out for it. Like the ball, it was, it was ball like to hand, not hand to it ball. It was like self defense almost because he was like, "Oh, the ball's coming!" Ah, but he turned and angled himself perfectly yeah. on frame. But you, but still, I, I think if you're a ref and you do catch that, yeah. you, you just you don't allow that as a goal. I don't agree. No, I, I think it was. Uh, I mean, NYC. I mean, they did score another goal, so. Seattle can't say this is the reason why they lost right. because they right. did concede even a second goal after that. And NYCFC, they have not lost since they got blown out by the Red Bulls several weeks ago. They have some draws scattered yeah. in there, but they haven't yeah. lost. Right. Well, and Seattle is just horrendous right now. They are, and that's that's the weird part about it. So maybe with Dempsey coming back, maybe there's a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to bet much on it, honestly. Uh, Vancouver beat Philadelphia, surprisingly. You know, I don't know if uh, many folks saw that Vancouver was going to be able to do that. Philadelphia... Top of the East, still top of the East. Well, and you have Alberg, who's coming off of a hat trick. Yeah. And for Philly, he gets another goal right away in the 14th minute, and you're thinking, oh, here he goes again. And then Philadelphia, up until the 94th minute, with uh, Pontius putting in a, you know, an extra goal in yeah. there, were pretty quiet. Vancouver just decided they they needed to win a game. And they they did. They really did. I mean, with that win now, they uh, they moved to fourth place in the Western Conference with 24 points. They're 7-3-7. Seven, seven. They have seven wins? Vancouver what? does. Wow. They also have seven losses. That's probably well, more. That's... They, didn't they start hot, though? Well, if you, you they, know, well, we, we've talked about Vancouver just being a streaky team. You know, are. If well, you remember, I said the last show, it seems like they have a loss, a win, a loss, a win, a loss, yeah. a draw, and that's you know that's what happened here. I mean, the last couple of weeks, loss, draw, loss, win. Yeah, they've been all over the place. I mean, they they lost the first two games, one, two, drew, lost two, one, draw. Yeah, they've been all over the place. So how interesting! I didn't realize they had that many wins, huh? And New England beat them. What do you know about that? Anyway, moving on. Uh, Columbus and New York Red Bulls. Columbus haven't been the same since Kai Kamara left. The Red Bulls they haven't. They're a decent team. 
They are third with that draw because that allowed NYCFC with their win to piggyback their rivals as much as they don't call themselves rivals but are. <laughs> it's not a rivalry if the other team never wins. Well, either way, they're still share the same city. Be that as it may, the Red Bulls with that draw stuck themselves in third place with 23 points. Columbus, they have 16 points. They're 3-7-5 three, they're three, and five through 15 games, ninth place in the East. Well, let's be honest. Higuain being out, you know, being injured yeah. has had a severe effect on Columbus as well. So you lose. I, I realize Kamara may have been a cancer in the locker room, but on the field. It's hard to deny. He was, yeah, he was he was fantastic. So to have Kamara and Higuain both out. Yep. Doesn't surprise me that Columbus is suffering like If you're looking for like one, one ray of hope, Columbus has only lost one game out of their last six. Is that right? If I you want to look that. for they've had four draws, one win, one loss. If okay. you want to look for some ray of sunshine if you're a Columbus Crew fan. Uh, aside from that, you look at the other games, Montreal, Sporting, Kansas City, they drew. We were a little surprised by that. Well, what was the big surprise is a brace from Dom Dwyer in that game. It's nice to see him find the score again. Yeah. You know, forget what it was like to see him score. Uh, Orlando beat Toronto FC 3-2, to two, a very important win for uh, Orlando, as now they move into fifth place with 20 points. Them, D.C. United, they and D.C. United both have 20 points. Um, Orlando has only won four games, but they've drawn eight. So that eight points is what's keeping them in the, right. the top half. Uh, FC Dallas beat RSL 2-0. FC Dallas continuing to assert themselves. They sit in second place now, not only in the Supporter Shield, but also in the Western Conference, which is basically the Supporter Shield, uh, at 9-4-5 and five with 31 and, points. And Kellen Acosta once again scoring for FC Dallas. Good to see. It's nice to see young U.S. internationals doing well. Uh, San Jose and LA Galaxy once again for the second time <laughs> playing to a 1-1 draw this time. Still a draw. Yeah, Who's the best team in California? We don't know. Well, and you had three Galaxy players score. What I mean by that is you had uh, Giovanni Dos Santos. I'm sorry, two Galaxy yes. players score. Dos Santos scores for the Galaxy in the 69th minute, and former Galaxy player Chad Barrett does what he do- what did what, uh, for the Galaxy. He puts guy. a goal in in the 90th minute to tie it up. Crazy. Uh, for, for, and... Uh, I'm jumping. I'm excited about this news, Baxter, which is why I keep jumping on my own sentence. But yep. this game registered one million viewers on Univision. How interesting! It is the most watched MLS game, I believe, since 2008 on any 1 network. One million. Because it came after the U.S. Columbia game, so everybody's like, so a lot oh, of people soccer. stayed tuned in. They stayed in. Yeah. Hmm. How interesting! Which is then, great. Yeah, and then of course Portland beat Houston in a scorching game. It was I heard it was ungodly hot in, in Houston. They won three to two. You know, this time last year it was the exact same thing. It, when I was out there this time last yep. year, Baxter, it was ninety nine degrees almost every single day. Incredible. My goodness. All right, uh, so let's move on here to our predictions quickly. Chicago taking on San Jose. Chicago's hosting. San Jose's winning, in my opinion. You, Simon? Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh, San Jose as San well. San Jose, okay. Uh, RSL, DC United next day, or next game. I'm going to go with DC United. DC United, okay. I'm going to take RSL on this one. I, I, I like uh, RSL's... Yeah, I mean, they're playing at home. I actually think RSL is the smart pick, but DC United's not playing as bad as they have been. And, True. And I see them sneaking out at minimum a draw, but very possibly a win. So I'm, I am calling this my upset pick of the week back. How interesting. Okay. Uh, Montreal and New England. In Montreal. In Montreal. I'm going to go with Montreal. Okay. I'm going to stick with New England. Call me crazy, but... I always call you crazy. I know you do. TFC and Seattle. (sighs) This has to be Toronto, doesn't it? At home in in, in Canada. That's who I have. Yeah, I got to go with Toronto on this one. Okay. Houston, Philadelphia. I have Philly winning this one, even though Houston hosts. (sighs) Whew. Let me let me do a little bit of thinking here, Baxter. We got Houston is in Houston mm-hmm. playing against Philadelphia. Yep. You know we're going to see a lot of uh, long shot opportunities from Houston in this one. Philadelphia, though, they like to create a lot of scoring chances. They do. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to go with the Union on this one. Okay. Yeah. Is, is that who you picked? That's who I picked. Okay. Yes. NYCFC and the Red Bulls. Listen, based off the last game, you got to believe mm-hmm. the Red Bulls are going to win this. Now, I don't think they're going to win it as by seven goals again. New York City FC is going to have to be a little bit more prepared for this. At the same time, when you have Jesse Marsh coming out and saying this game means a lot, you got to believe that he's going to prep the same way. I hope so. And is Patrick Vieri going to fall again and say, nah, I'm not going to really prep for this. It's just a game. If that's the case, New York's going to blow them out of the water once again. I have the Red Bulls winning this game again. As much as I'd like to see this more of a contested game, 
I think New England or the the Red Bulls. That's who they are. Are going to win by a large margin. A large margin. Sporting Kansas City and Columbus. What do you say in this one? Yeah, I think uh, what we were talking about. Columbus is pretty weak right now. I got to go with Sporting Kansas City. And that's actually who I'm going to take too. I thought about a draw for a moment, but then I realized that SKC is just not doesn't suck as bad as Columbus. Yeah, I don't think they do anymore. Yeah. Colorado Portland. Ooh, we're going all the way to the fifth. Ooh, I didn't prep for this. Um, got to go up until Wednesday of next we week. We do. Okay. There's games uh, on Monday and Wednesday. Right. I'll have to send you my uh, predictions when, you need I'm, to. when I'm away. Please do. I will read them on the air. Listen, I am going to have to call a draw on this one. Okay. Tim Howard's first start. You don't think Columbus or Colorado rallies around their main man? Oh, I think they rally. I could I, I could actually see this being a 0-0 draw. Boring. Because of Gleason's play and mm-hmm. because of Howard's play. If anything, I... I I feel Colorado may be the victors in this. I don't think Portland will win, but I just I, I see this being a draw because oh, it's in Colorado. Okay, um, I think Portland's gonna gonna ruin the party. You do. I find I, I believe that uh, Portland is going to come out, and I think that they're going to put a few past Tim Howard and uh, make Colorado think about themselves for a little bit. Colorado likes to play from the wings and put it in the box, and Portland's terrible on the wings and de- defensively. So this is this is why I'm going with. Uh, a, a zero zero draw, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be Cancel optimistic. I'm going to try to go for Portland. Okay. If that's my. I love it. That's my quote it. unquote upset, I guess, for the week. All right. Uh, FC Dallas, Orlando. FC In Dallas. FC Dallas. FC Dallas. Easy pick. Okay. That's uh, that is mine as well. L.A. Vancouver. Baxter, I am going to go with the Alley Galaxy on this one. I'm pretty pretty straightforward this week. That's honestly who I was thinking, too. And then the Rebs and NYCFC in Boston. Both teams are playing double games this week, and they conclude with playing each other's double partner. Here's what I think is going to happen. We're not going to see De- uh, David Villa play much in the first game. We'll see him play a lot in the second game. I'm actually taking the Baby Blues. How interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go for a draw on this one, actually. Um I think NYCFC playing on a normal size field is much better than when they play on their little field. And um, New England is decent at home. They're not amazing, but they're they're semi-decent. And uh, I think this is going to be a fun game to watch. Probably get a couple goals out of it, but it's going to be a draw in the end, I believe. So we'll see what happens. Sounds good. Let us know your predictions on Twitter or on Facebook. Two at Two Up Front Soccer. The number two at Baxter Colburn at Simon Provan. And then Two Up Front Soccer on Facebook as well. All right, one more break. One more segment, Power Rankings, I Believe, and we're out of here for the last time, and then uh, we'll talk about it again next time. I believe. Woo-hoo. Hang with us. We're two up the front. The children of a future. On shop, or by shop. I don't even know. I'm done. I'm out. Uh- Things up for another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Backstar, and this is Simo. Ah, oh, welcome back inside the studio. Now, now we sound French. <laughs> I don't know what's going uh, on. I love it. I love it, Baxter. Woo! Fantastic show. We're having a lot of fun. That's Absolutely. what this is about. Exactly. If you don't have fun with what you do, you're not having fun. Isn't that right? <laughs> Absolutely. If Even- you're not having fun, folks, remember you're not having fun. Yes. <laughs> Words to live by. It's, by a motivational, it's a motivational poster somewhere by now, I hope. It's trending on Twitter. It's doing something on Instagram. I don't know. It's time for Power <laughs> Ranking, Simon. Uh, let's have a gander here at what we've got going on. Let's get the formalities out of the way. Colorado's number one for both of us again, so we don't need to let people wait in anticipation. But our two through five, very different than last week, I feel like. They are different. I got to actually... Uh, are you switching? Just one thing. Oh, just one thing. Just one I feel thing. like I need to like blow. Like I feel like I need to like. <laughs> you, you, you ha- time is up. You had your moment, Simon. I don't think you need to do it anymore. It's, it's just I got to change two letters, Baxter. What, That's what? all it is. What do you need to change? Are oh, we going back to break? Apparently, we're just back right back into the song. I don't know what the heck. Welcome back to Two Up Front. We're going to do our power ranking segment. I need to change the RB in my number five spot to FC. Oh, how interesting! Does that make sense? FC you, FC RB. No, 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 not FCRB. It's NYFC oh, instead see, of I, NYRB. See, I thought about that as well. 
But I didn't go that route. You don't want to get fooled by them again. I know. FC Dallas comes at my number five. They were in my number four last week. They were your number five last week. They're my number five this week, if you were following along at home. You dropped them? By one. Because I put NYRB, not NYFC, <laughs> in number four. Wow. What are you going to do? Wow. I, well, I, I had Red Bulls in there up until this last minute because then I realized, you know what? What? It's kind of like a tie for me with with the New York clubs right now because New York did have that string of four wins, but they lost and they drew. And NYCFC, they had a draw and a loss, but now they've won two. So it's tough for me to – I mean, yeah, it's Seattle. But they did beat Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a good team in the East this year. You're you right. Know, they beat them 3-2. I uh, agree. Red Bulls only drew against a very weak Columbus. That is true. They but- lost to RSL, who's also not incredibly strong. And, and their wins also, again, you know, Seattle. Okay, Toronto. That's that's a good win. <laughs> they do beat NYCFC 7 nothing. Well, look at it, though. I mean, New York has the most points through the last six games of any team in MLS. No, it's it's, it's true. 13. It's true. And actually, the reason I had the Red Bulls in there is because of that 7-0 loss. Mm-hmm. But then I also go back and think, okay, that was May 21st. We're, we're a month and a week removed from true. that. And, that is and, true. And New York City has been looking better. Uh, yeah. No, I'd agree with you on that one, but uh, I'm going to stick with the Red Bulls right now when a team has a... I mean, I understand take away seven goals if you need to, a plus 12 goal difference and leading the league in 13 points over the last six games. It's hard for me to argue against that. That's why I have them in my fourth spot. You, on the other hand, have a team that wasn't even in your power rankings. They, just, haven't, they haven't been in your power rankings... No, in a long time. In a very long, long time. time. I just, I, were they number one in your power rankings last time they were in your power rankings? No. Maybe. When's the last time you had them in your power rankings? <laughs> Pretty sure they were number one in your power rankings last time they were even there. In week six. That's the last they time were this team one. was number one, but now they are just they're just casually strolling into your power rankings now at number Casually four. strolling. Who yes. is this? Yes. Well this, we this would be the Lions of Orlando. How interesting. The purple lions. The purple lions. The lionesses. No, that's yes. that's the yes. Orlando problem. Well you're not too surprised by this. But we'll get to that later. Uh, by Orlando look I'm it. not surprised by? What's that? What am I not surprised by? by that Orlando? I have Orlando in my power well, rankings. Well, nine points over the last six right. games. They're undefeated in five. And, and who did they beat in their last game? Again, Toronto FC. Yeah. Three to two. A and that was, that was five days ago. Yeah. Not a bad team. Not a bad team at all. So uh, credit to them for that. Now, number three for me is the Portland Timbers, a team that has played well uh, over the last six games, 11 points out of their last six. They're undefeated in five, three wins, two draws, and one loss. Over the last six games, what do you say you as a Timbers fan? I too like high, it. too low. The, your Portland at number two? No, my Portland at number. Oh, they are. Oh, I, I hopped over Orlando. How sad is that? Well, Orlando's my three, but you made all the arguments for Orlando. So yes, Portland's my number two. I don't know. <laughs> Who's your number three, Simon? <laughs> My number three is FC Dallas, Baxter. Uh, hey, wow. it was me last week that, that kind of uh, lost track of mine, True. so that's okay. I forgive you. Thank you. Um, now, I have FC Dallas as my number three, which I had number five. The reason I moved them up is because they won. They beat Real Salt yeah. Lake 2 nothing, which is why it confused me that you had dropped them. But I get it because you think other teams are, are better. Even though they won, you yes. think that other teams are better than they are right now. Yes. Totally get that. Yeah, okay. Um, you've been wrong before. You can be wrong again. Happens. Um, That's fine. Totally fine. Yeah, but no. Uh, let's let's just jump to number two right away. Yep. You've basically Portland more, more of the us. argument for Portland. And yeah, it's... I, th- I feel like they've been doing this quietly, Baxter. Three wins, two draws in the last five games. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I mean, looking at what they've done, it's, it's I was a little surprised when I... Looked at the form of the last team, the, the couple teams around the league. I was like, wait a minute, Portland is actually doing well. And on top of that, Baxter, only one of those teams is from the Eastern Conference. The mm-hmm. other four are from the Western Conference. Which we know how tough the West. So much more weight. You, you wrote a great article for uh, Vavil USA on on how weak the East is and how that's helping New England. It so is. Uh, to you. see Portland roll off these wins and and a draw against these Western Conference foes, that's impressive. Mm. I agree. No, I completely agree. I mean, one other fact I want to point out about that article, though, too, that I mentioned is the amount of draws in each league, too. The Western teams, they find a way to win or lose. But the East teams, they're the kings of draws. 55 draws they've got this yeah. season among all 10 teams in the East. And with that, you almost expect the Galaxy to be in the East this year. Because if if you look at this, is a cool feature on MLSsoccer.com. So let's give them some love, especially since they did put course, us in there. I appreciate uh, that. You know, Thank you, guys. We yeah, love you. Absolutely. Um, I love this results map. It's almost all yellow and red yeah. for the LA Galaxy. It's 
Amazing. You know, they had some wins. They're in Their fifth. last win was May 8th, Baxter. Everything wow. after that, five draws, two losses. That's incredible. So definitely some desperation setting in if you're an LA Galaxy fan. 5, 8, and 3, 23 points overall. And then Colorado, both of our number one, Simon, as we mentioned earlier, undefeated in what seems like a decade. Uh, they haven't lost a game since week five. And, and Baxter, we, we I don't want to rehash what we talked about last week, but man, you got to feel for Zach McMath, mostly because I now have to drop him from my fantasy team. More than likely, yes. And it's not like NFL fantasy where you can keep him on the bench. Like maybe he will, maybe yeah. he'll come back. And it's like now he's gonna he's gone. I mean, I've, I've I've toyed with the idea of keeping him on there just in case Howard mm-hmm. goes down. But I'm also thinking, what happens when this transfer window opens? Are they going to look to trade him? Maybe away? Maybe he probably would be worth a fair penny. There's a couple of MLS teams like we talked about that might pay decent money to have a good keeper like Zach McBath on their team. Uh, your fun fact of the week, Simon, uh, provided by whoscored.com, Pedro Morales of the Vancouver Whitecaps has taken the most penalties in MLS this season ah, with five. How about He's that? taken five penalties. I thought you were asking me what's my fun fact but of the week. Do you have a fun I... fact for the week? I mean, uh, I don't know if you have one. That's great. I didn't plan for that, but you can tell me one. No, I don't. Okay. Anything else you need to say? Well, we have uh, one one final thing to that go is, with, right? That is true. We do, uh, we do say a certain thing, don't we? <laughs> Now we got to change that to a jingle, Baxter. I believe, I believe, something like that. I don't know. Something. Are we overdoing this thing? Probably. Probably. That's probably why they don't like us. (laughs) They they like us. Who knows? All right, it's time for I believe, Simon. Your last before you head out west. You hitch up the wagons. You catch malaria, and hopefully shoot a couple bears and ducks on your way on the trail. Sounds good. As as long as uh, I can trade them for more bullets along the way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what a classic game. That was real entertainment when we were young. You can find it on the internet now, by you the way. Can. Oregon it's Trail. Like I've played it like a couple times. Souped up version of yeah. it or whatever. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So what do you what do you believe? This well, week? Baxter, I, my I believe is about the show. I do want to thank again MLSsoccer.com genuinely now for uh, for including us on their roster yes. of MLS and beyond uh, podcast out there. Baxter, we have a meeting later today that that could be very fruitful for us. Yes, and you are so so my I believe is something I said probably about a year ago. I believe that this show will just continue to take off, and. I don't believe. I know it's because of all the support we've gotten. I so agree. again, I want to want to thank those folks who have been interacting with us online. I want to thank people who have reached out to us about possible sponsorships, and uh, and hopefully we in a couple of weeks, Baxter, when I return, we do have another announcement about another fantastic sponsor. I certainly hope so. Yes. Um, to kind of go off of that, yeah. I mean, I don't have anything soccer related that I want to go off this week. I just, I mean. I believe that not only including with our show, but also with what the Milwaukee Torrent are doing as well, too, I think that we are continuing to bring the Milwaukee soccer market together, I feel like. It's yeah. been divided for such a long time. That wasn't necessarily our our thought in the beginning. We just wanted to talk about soccer for fun, but we have continued to inadvertently bring Milwaukee kind of together a little bit based off of the work we're doing with what Andy Davi's doing with the Torrent, what we're doing with the Torrent. And it's the it's just been amazing to see and you know shout out to as we mentioned Anthony Larson, Scott Carlson, Fred Gillick of the Milwaukee Barons, Brian Weber. There's so many different people to thank for their support of us and vice versa as well too. Well, and even, and even with that, you know Baxter, we we do make a point for people who are in the local market here in Milwaukee. We do make a point to. I guess the best way to say it, to stay out of any of the yes. uh, arguments yep. that might be going on. So just because we're the broadcast team for the Torrent doesn't mean that we're not open to interviewing other people on oh, our yeah. show from Milwaukee. Absolutely. So if you are from Milwaukee, you're one of the clubs in town, and you want to come on the show, open arms. Yeah. Send us a message on Facebook. You can find us on social media, Simon, can't you? You sure can. Facebook, 2 Up Front. On Twitter, we are at 2 Up Front Soccer. He is at Baxter Colburn. I'm at Simon Provan. You can find us on the web at 2UpFrontSoccer.com, which is a great way to get in touch with us. Click on the Contact Us. Refurbish that page a little bit today, Baxter. Yeah, nicely done, sir. Nicely done. And what else should we mention? They can email us, too, if they want to. Uh, 2 upfrontsoccer at gmail.com. And, of course, you can find us on the Sports Podcasting Network, along with Kevin Laramie and all their fantastic shows that they have as well up there at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on Fridays and then on demand, of course, anytime on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Spreaker.com. Write us a review. Give us a like if you don't mind. We appreciate it. And uh, Simon, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, best of luck in Oregon, sir. We'll uh, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Sounds great, Baxter. Have a great trip up north. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I am looking a bit forward to getting away. I'm going to miss the family, but at least I know what I'm doing out there is worth it. So, and I'm, of course, going to 
miss the two up front stuff, but I'll tune in when I can Absolutely. after my 13 hours of training per day is done. Sounds like fun. Well, he is Simon Proven. I'm Baxter Colburn. With our manager being the one above, we are two up front.